So this is the part of the course where we finally get to introduce to you the concept of masking. Now this is such a powerful concept and this is the single biggest reason to bring your photos into Lightroom Mobile in the first place. So what am I talking about? What is a mask anyway? So a mask simply means affect part of the image, but not all of it. I want you to take this little area of the image and apply an adjustment to that, or take that little part of the image and not apply that adjustment to it. Apply it to everything but that subject so we can invert these masks. Now we start to target specific areas of the image and when we do that, we can walk away with a significantly more powerful and impactful images in the process. So of all the ways that we can identify and isolate our subject, one of the most powerful yet simple tools we have available to us is selecting by subject. All of a sudden we have a lot more creative control. We were identifying what we want people to look at and we were targeting that thing and we're using all of our sliders for the single purpose of making that our primary area of focus. So for example, take a look at this before and take a look at this after. That is the power and impact that understanding and utilizing masking has when we're working on our edits in our photography. Now it is worth mentioning that masking is one of those options that is only available if you're a paid subscriber to Adobe Lightroom. It's just something to keep in mind, something to know about. And again, I truly do believe that this is worthwhile and is definitely gonna help improve your photographs. So having said that, let's jump in. First thing I wanna do with this image open is click where it says masking all the way on the bottom on the left hand side. And if I open that up, it's not gonna do much other than give me this plus icon on the bottom right. So when I click on that, it's gonna give me a whole bunch of different options for different types of masks. And we're gonna go through each one of them, but the first one is honestly the most important. It just automatically finds what it thinks is your subject and instantly creates a mask so that we can apply local adjustments. So let's do that now. I'm gonna click on select subject here, and then it's gonna isolate that subject and instantly give me a mask. So let me show you what we can do with it. If I click on light, and I simply just drag the exposure up and down, look at what this does. Look how perfect that mask is. Think about the creative potential that this allows us. This is exactly what we wanna do when we wanna have photos that have maximum impact. We wanna identify our subject and make it stand out. And one of the best things that we can do to make our subject stand out is to make it brighter. Here's the problem though. It's already as bright as it needs to be. So if I wanna make my subject brighter, what else can I do? Well, I can take what's not my subject and make that not as bright. So with this mask in place, I wanna draw your attention to the left-hand side of the frame. You're gonna see a little icon there. And if we tap that icon, you're gonna see a few more options that we have available to us in our screen. Now I'm just gonna grab that little white vertical line there, right next to the trash can and drag that out so you can see what these icons actually mean. Now you're gonna realize that that icon at the top is invert. So if I click on invert, I'll drag that vertical line back to the left there. Now we have the opposite of my subject. So I'm gonna grab this exposure slider and just drag it all the way down here until I start to really like that result. And look at the difference there. So now if I tap and hold on the screen, here's my before and here's my after. Now we're really starting to make our subject stand out. So think about what we're doing here. Now why does this work? It's because the human eye cannot help but look at whatever's brightest in the frame. So if you're not there to direct the viewer's eye for them, their eye already knows what to do by making your subject the brightest part of the frame. Now here's the thing, the human eye will also go to whatever's warmest in the frame. It'll instantly go to whatever's warmer versus cooler in any photo. So if you want people to engage with the primary focus of our image, well, we take the subject, we identify it, we mask it, and then we make it brighter, but we also make it warmer. We don't necessarily need to make this leaf any warmer. We can take what's not the subject, what's not the leaf, and make it cooler. So let's do that. I'm gonna click on color right next to lights. I'm gonna grab the temperature slider, and I'm just gonna bring that down to negative 10. Now let's take a look at what's happening, before and after. So now let's create a second mask here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that masking icon again. I'm gonna click on that plus icon on the right hand side. And again, I'm gonna choose select subject. It's gonna do the same thing it did before. It's gonna select and isolate my subject. What do we do next? Well then naturally we wanna take our subject and make it warmer. So I'm gonna click on color. I'm gonna grab my temperature slider. 
Now I'm gonna drag this to the right until I'm happy. Now we don't wanna to go too far, I think maybe around 20 or so, right? Look at the difference here. I'm gonna tap and hold on the screen before and after. Now this is really starting to pop off the screen, isn't it? Utilizing warm versus cool will also direct the viewer's eye to where you want them to look. So now we're gonna open up our effects tab here and let's actually bring some detail into the area where we want people to look. Now we have texture, we have clarity, and we have dehaze. So let's start with texture. Now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can really see what's happening. I'm gonna grab that texture slider and drag it to the right until I'm happy with the result. I think somewhere around 40 is gonna work pretty well. Now the next thing we wanna do is clarity. And what happens if we increase clarity? Well, we're gonna increase details, but also increased contrast in the process. I'm gonna grab that clarity slider and drag that to the right. And maybe somewhere around 20 here is gonna work pretty well. And then dehaze. Now you're gonna start seeing that there's an order and typically the way I apply these sliders, I usually do a little bit more texture than clarity and a little bit more clarity than dehaze. So I'm gonna click on that dehaze. I think around 10 is gonna do it here. Now let's zoom back out. I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna click that checkbox here. Look at that detail that we brought out here. There's one last detail that we wanna take care of, and that's details, that's the sharpness. We really wanna use sharpness in a very specific way as a local adjustment to make our subject stand out. I'm gonna click back on our mask, and you're gonna start seeing multiple masks start being applied. Now this isn't something to shy away from, it's just something to understand that Lightroom will keep track of your masks for you and it gives you a little bit of a preview of what these masks look like. Whatever is white inside that mask is where that mask is being applied or what's being affected as we move those sliders. So if we look at that top mask here and that leaf is white, that means that the adjustments are being applied to that leaf. If you look at the mask underneath it, it's that background that's white. That means the adjustments are being applied to the background. So if we wanna sharpen the leaf, I'm just gonna tap on that first mask here. It'll show me, right, that little red blip up here that showed me this is your mask. Now I can apply sharpening once I have that mask activated. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna click on detail here. I am gonna zoom in. Anytime you apply sharpness, you do wanna zoom in. I think that's a good amount there. And now we're just gonna grab that sharpness slider and drag that to the right. We don't wanna to go too far. I think around 50 or 60 should do it. Maybe we'll do 60 here. And that's just gonna give us just a little bit more bite to the photo. We're gonna click that checkbox and now we're in a really good place. So the next thing we want to adjust is a vignette. What that's gonna do as we covered previously is just focus the eye even more towards the middle of the frame. So let me show you how we're gonna apply this. I'm gonna click on effects and I'm gonna drag my vignette slider to the left just a little bit here. I don't wanna to go too far, but I think around Let's do negative 20 or so. There we go. Now if I just tap and hold on the word effects, there's our before and there's our after. Now let's just adjust the midpoint to really dial this in. So I'm gonna grab our midpoint here. I'm gonna bring this back. I'm gonna move this to the left until I'm happy with the result. Now this isn't as immediately obvious, so I'm gonna go back and forth just to show you what this is doing. I'm gonna dial it in maybe somewhere in the middle. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go to 20. There we go. Now let's take a look at what we have. I'll tap on the screen. Here's our before and after so far. Okay, so we have our vignette applied. What else can we do to improve this photo? What else can we do to make this subject stand out? So what stands out to me is just a tiny bit too bright. So I'm gonna click on light here. Now I'm gonna adjust the exposure, just darken it down ever so slightly. Let's say negative 0.3, right? It's about a third of a stop darken out, and I think that really is an improvement. It was just a little bit too bright for my taste. I also want to increase the contrast just a little bit too. So I'll grab that slider and drag that to the right just a little bit. I think around 30 will do it. And we want to add just a little bit more saturation and contrast to the photo still. In order to do that, I'm not just going to grab that contrast slider. If I want to take it a little bit further, I'm going to go to my effects tab here. And now let's grab that dehaze slider. So I'm going to click and hold on that slider and drag it to the right until I'm happy. Too far, we start to add some unnatural color here, but I think around 60. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So really what's catching my eye now is that color, right? That's really starting to stand out. So the last move I think we should make is address that color. I'm gonna click on that color tab here. I'm gonna swipe up a little until I see my vibrance. I'm gonna drag that to the right just to increase the saturation of the colors just a little bit more. Let's go to 30. 
So in summary, what do we do here? Why is this so effective? Why does this after image look so much better than the before? And what we did specifically in this video is introduce you to the power and the concept of utilizing local adjustments, utilizing the auto masking available to us in Lightroom Mobile, and then we utilized light. We used luminosity contrast. We used color contrast. And then we used details. So all these sliders have one singular purpose to make our subjects stand out. And that's exactly how we walk away with an image that we're absolutely gonna love. This video was a free preview of the iPhone Editing Academy online course. In this course, you'll discover everything you need to know to edit your photos to perfection using the device that's always in your pocket. Whether you want to breathe new life into your old images or make your best photos even better, you'll find out exactly how to do that on your iPhone. I'll show you the latest photo editing tricks that will transform even average photos into stunning masterpieces in just a few minutes. So if you'd like to learn more about creating incredible photo edits on your iPhone, please take a look at the full version of my iPhone Editing Academy course. You'll find the link in the description right next to this video. So click on that link now and I'll see you inside the full version of this course.